Here we want to look at double integrals over more general regions. So in a previous video we looked at double integrals over rectangles in the plane, but here we want more general regions like this blob up here. So we'll generally denote that in the following way. So we have this double integral over d of our function f dA, where that's kind of a differential area component. So we've got two main cases that we want to look at in this video. There's obviously going to be a bunch of different cases after this that we'll look at um, in um, the preceding videos. Um, so the first one we want to look at is a so-called type 1 region. And now notice it is bound on the left and the right by the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b. And it's bound below and above by this curve g1 of x and g2 of x. So that's a type 1 region, and then a type 2 region is really kind of that same thing but on its side. So it's bound above and below by horizontal lines C and D, and it's bound on the left by some curve H1 of Y, where we've written X as a function of Y, and it's bound on the right by H2 of Y, which is, uh, again, X is another function of Y. Okay, great. So now what we want to do here is set up the iterated integral for each of these cases. So I won't be deriving these, but kind of the general idea is you split this interval a to b in rec into rectangles, and then for each sub-interval between a and b, you have a rectangle going from here to here, which you split further into pieces. Um, but all of these are going to have different lengths depending on this curve. So I'll let you look for that, but that's actually pretty similar to what we did earlier when we looked at um, the same kind of thing with integrals on a rectangle. Okay, great. So let's look at this type 1 region. So in this case, we have the double integral over d of our function dA. So that will be an integral from a to b. So notice we're doing the x integral on the outside. And then we're doing the y integral on the inside. So it'll be from g1 of x to g2 of x. And then here we'll have f of x, y. Then we need to do dy, dx. Okay, so now notice here we have x numbers, and here we have y functions. So it's important to have only numbers on the outside um, um, integral because we really want a number at the end of this. Okay, and then type 2 integrals are going to be essentially the same thing just with everything reversed. So in this case we have the double integral over d of f dA so that's going to be given by the integral from c to d, the integral from h1 of y to h2 of y of f of xy dx dy. Okay good. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll look at some examples of this. Okay, so the first example we want to look at is the following one. So we'll take the double integral over the region D of the function 3x plus 2y, and D will be the region bound by these two parabolas. So we have y equals x squared plus 1 and y equals 2x squared. So let's do a little sketch up of what this picture looks like. So notice that we have y equals x squared plus 1, so that's going to be a parabola facing upwards that goes through this point right here, which is the point 0, 1. Okay, good. And then y equals 2x squared. That's going to be a slightly steeper parabola. So that's going to go something like that. So it should be symmetric on either side, but um, you'll just have to forgive my drawing. So in other words, our region D will be given by this red shaded region right here. So notice our top curve is this one x squared plus 1, and then our bottom curve is this one, 2x squared. And so now we probably need to find these intersection points right here and right here because those will play the role of a and b for this type 1 integral. Okay, so we can find those intersection points by setting those curves equal to each other. So notice we'll have 2x squared equals x squared plus 1. So that is going to give us x squared equals 1, which gives us x equals plus minus 1. Great. So we have this is going from minus 1 to plus 1. Okay? So notice that's going to allow us 
to rewrite this double integral in the following way. So we have this double integral of 3x plus 2y dA will be the integral from minus 1 to 1, the integral from 2x squared to x squared plus 1, because we're going from the bottom curve to the top curve. And then we have our function, which is 3x plus 2y, and then we have dy dx. We have to do the y integral first and the x integral second. Okay, now it's just fairly easy. We can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus twice because now instead of this being a double integral, it's an iterated integral. In other words, it's two single integrals in a row. Um, so notice that is going to give us the integral from minus 1 to 1 of, we can take the antiderivative of this with respect to uh, y, which is going to give us 3xy, because 3x is a constant with respect to y, so the antiderivative will be that constant times y, plus y squared. Now we need to evaluate that from 2x squared to 1 plus x squared, and then we'll have dx. So we've got something like that. And then notice here, these are y values. Great. So that means we're going to plug in y equals 1 plus x squared, y equals 2x, subtract them, and then continue on. So here we have the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 3x times 1 plus x squared plus um, uh, 1 plus x squared squared. So that's what we get if we plug in the top bound of integration. And then plugging in the bottom bound of integration, we will get, um, let's see, it's going to be 6x cubed uh, plus 4x cubed, so dx. So that's what we have for this. Okay, so now let's see how that simplifies. So now we have the integral from minus one to one of, we can multiply this out. We'll have three x uh, plus three x cubed um, plus x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one. So that's what we get if we FOIL that out. And then we'll have, this is minus six x cubed uh, plus four uh, x Let's see, that should be to the fourth power, I believe. To the fourth power, so let's change that. Good. Okay, great. So now uh, let's see what we get when we simplify that. So we're going to have the integral from minus one to one of, so we've got like terms like this, this x to the fourth minus four x to the fourth. So that's gonna give us minus three x to the fourth right there. Good. We'll have uh, this x cubed minus the 6x cubed. So that's going to be minus 3x cubed. Good. And then we'll have, let's see, what else? We have a 2x squared, a 3x, and a 1. So plus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. And then this is all dx. So we've uh, boiled this down to a pretty simple calculus one problem. Now I would stop here, but I actually want to use a trick to simplify this uh, fairly quickly. So I'll clean up the board and so we can do that trick. Okay, so we left off at this point. So notice I've broken this up into two integrals. So the integral of everything with an even exponent, and then the integral of everything with an odd exponent. Now, first of all, I wanna notice that here we have um, an integral over the interval from minus one to one, which is uh, symmetric about the origin, and then we have an odd function here. So since we have an odd function here, and then this symmetric interval of integration, we know that this is equal to zero. So again, that's because that's an odd function. And then uh, since this is an even function, we can do a similar trick, but we won't get zero. We will get two times the integral from zero to one of this thing. So that's minus three x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one dx. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and take the antiderivative, which we can do now. So this is going to be, um, so I'll multiply this 2 through. So I have minus 6 
x to the fifth over five. So I increase my exponent by one, divide by my new exponent. So then I have four, so plus four x cubed over three. Again, um, raise my exponent by one, divide by that new exponent, and then I have plus two x. And now I've got to evaluate that from zero to one. That's really great because evaluating it at zero, we just get zero, which means everything comes from evaluating at one. We're gonna have minus six over five plus four over three plus two. And then I'll let you guys uh, calculate what that is if you wanna simplify it, but that's the idea. All right, I'll clean up the board and then we'll do an example of a type two region. Okay, so here we've got an example which looks like it's an integral over a type one type region because we have the dy integral on the inside and the dx integral on the outside. But what we'll notice is that we can't take the inner antiderivative and that is because uh, sine of y squared, that is not an elementary function. So remember, non-elementary functions are those which don't have nice closed antiderivatives. So we really can't proceed in any nice nice way with this double integral without changing it a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to rewrite this as a double integral instead of an inter iterated integral of the same thing. So sine of y squared dA. And now let's go ahead and notice that in this case d is going to be written in the following way. So it's going to be all x and y where x goes from 0 to 1 and then y goes from x to 1. Okay, good. But that region is pretty easy to draw. So notice uh, what's important is we have x going from 0 to 1. So that would be from here to maybe here. So from 0 to 1. And then we have y going from the line x to the line 1. So here let's put y equals 1 up here. So that's going to be an important line. And then this is also going to be an important line right here. Great, so notice here we have, this is the line y equals x, this is the horizontal line y equals one. So in fact, our region D is this triangle right here. Okay, good. But notice such a triangle can be exhibited as a type one type integral or a type two type integral. And we can exhibit it as a type two integral in the following way. So notice this can also be written as all x, y, where y goes from zero to one and x is between, um, let's see, it's going to be between zero and y. So like, look, we've got y going from zero to one, and then the furthest le left x can go is the vertical line x equals zero, and the furthest right it can go is the line y equals x or x equals y. So we can do it like that, but what that's going to do is take this integral and rewrite it in the following way. So we'll have zero to one, zero to x, sine of y squared dx dy. So we've switched the bounds of integration. So let's reiterate what we did. We have this iterated integral, which we can't solve using el elementary methods without changing something. We re-envision it as a double integral, draw the picture of the region, and then rewrite the region as a so-called type 2 iterated integral, which gives us the equality of these two. But now notice, sine of y squared is a constant with respect to x, which means this inner integral is very simple. So that's going to be the integral from zero to one of x times sine of y squared. Now I need to evaluate that from x equals zero to x equals y. So recall this is x equals zero, x equals y, and then finally, after doing that, I'll get dy. So notice that's going to give me the integral from zero to one of y sine y squared dy. Notice if I plug in x equals zero, that just gives me zero, so it's no problem. Okay, so now over here, 
I'll notice that I can solve this with a u substitution. So if I let u equal y squared, that's going to let du equal 2y dy, which tells us that this y times dy is really one half du, and then this guy right here is just u. And then also notice that if y equals zero, u is also zero. And if y equals one, u is also one. So that means our bounds of integration don't change here. So this is going to be one half. We get the one half from this guy right here. And then the integral from zero to one of sine u du. Fantastic. But that is going to be uh, one half, and then we have uh, negative cosine u evaluated from zero to one. Okay? But now uh, notice if we uh, put everything into that, that's going to be one half, and then we'll have cosine of zero is one minus cosine of one, which, you know, that doesn't really have a nice number, we'll just call it cosine of one. Where notice I switched my order there um, because I have this minus sign. Okay, great, so that's uh, the end of this example and the end of the video.